بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الحبيب في الله as we mentioned being kind and gentle and respectful towards one's parents is an Islamic obligation and Sheikh Abdul Razak Hafidhullah Ta'ala gave us some of the adilla or proofs from the Quran <clears throat> primarily from the Quran and also from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he mentioned the hadith in Sahih Muslim uh, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and the embracing of Islam of his mother radiallahu ta'ala anha and this is something great and of course many of us uh, perhaps we've seen this story played out one of my good companions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him uh, his mother was blessed to embrace Islam and that is a great ni'mah alim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and preserve them, I mean, and bless them to be of the Salihin in this life as well as the hereafter. And may Allah guide all of us who have non-Muslim relatives and kinfolk and tribe, tribal members to Islam. Bless them all to embrace Islam. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. The Shaykh mentioned that some of the youth that when, they're, when they embrace Islam, they become harsh with their families and their, their ties. And we already mentioned that some of us have actually experienced this and unfortunately have fallen into this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive, forgive us of our many sins. The Shaykh said, Allah ta'ala, <coughs> he said, some of the youth make a mistake when they enter into Islam. Thus they distance themselves from their parents or they disassociate from them or they do not visit them or treat them kindly. And no doubt this is a mistake. It is required for him to be a good companion to his parents and to strive to be kind to his parents and he should not obey them if they call him to disbelief in associating partners with the law, the exalted. And there is no contradiction between these two affairs. There is no contradiction between being a good companion to the parents while at the same time not obeying them in their call to associating partners with a law the exalted. So it's very important for us to understand that those two concepts do not contradict one another, but it just shows that there are gradations, that obedience is not absolute. Likewise, when we have the issue of people, for example, those extreme extremists, when they call to their extremism and they say the Muslim ruler did such and such sin, or they called you to do disobedience here, or they did uh, uh, they allow such and such sin to take place in their society. But we know all of those ahadith and those ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we have to be obedient to the, uh, to the ruler, to the Muslim ruler. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَطِيعُوا اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُوا رُسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah says, uh, obey Allah and obey the messengers and those charged in authority over you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tied that obedience to the ruler along with obedience to Allah and his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. So it shows us it's great. It's, it's great. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa qariya, ma lam yu'miru bi ma'siyatin fi idha umiru bi ma'siyatin fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> hear and obey the Muslim uh, authority in that which you love and that which you dislike as long as he does not call you to disobedience to Allah, and if he calls you to disobedience to Allah, then there is no hearing and obeying, letting us know what, and we, we discussed this countless times, that it's muqayyid, that it's restricted, that doesn't mean absolute dis uh, uh, um, refusing to do the commands of the leader, but what it means is in those things which are disobedience to Allah, and likewise, the greatness, as, as the Sheikh has already mentioned and outlined for us, the greatness of the uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that a great right of our parents over us to be obedient to them 
that with regards to that, it, 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 the same principle apply, applies. That we are not, we do not obey them in disobedience to Allah. If they tell you to drink alcohol and you're a new Muslim or you're an old Muslim and you're being obedient to your parents, but in this you can say, oh my mother, oh my father, with kindness and gentleness and say, I can't. Because I'm a Muslim, I believe in Allah and I believe in His Messenger وسلم, and Islam has forbidden us from those actions. Likewise, with regards to polytheism and shirk. So we don't obey them in that, but that does not negate ta'a mutlaqin. That does not negate the fact that you are obedient to them in other commands of good. And I hope that's clear. Then the Shaykh said, Hafadullah <coughs> Ta'ala, <coughs> He said, I call upon every Muslim who has been tested with one or two parents who are disbelievers to read Surah Al-Luqman and also Surah Al-Ankabut uh, and also the statements of the scholars in the books of Tafsir, meaning the, the, the books which explain, uh, explain the meaning of these verses and the direction extracted from them in showing kindness and goodness to the parents while avoiding their call to polytheism and disbelief in Allah the Exalted. This is the conclusion of this topic. I ask Allah the Generous, the Lord of the Great Throne, by His beautiful names and lofty attributes to benefit us all from what He has taught us and to rectify all of our conditions. And I ask Him to guide us to the straight path and to not leave us to ourselves even for the blink of an eye. Verily, the blessed and exalted response to the supplication and He is the one hope is placed in and the best to reply uh, to rely on. And Allah knows best. May Allah, may the wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Thus ends our study of this fantastic but very concise treatise which shows us and emphasizes for us some very important lessons and points. Number one, that obedience to the parents, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, is a command, is something that we have to do, uh, is a religious duty. Number two, this is from common sense that you should be kind and gentle to one's parents and, and be gentle with others because no one learns and uh, for the most part, most people do not embrace a, a new faith or ch make a change in their lifestyle with violence, through violence and, and, and pushing and, and harmfulness. But rather, when you want to achieve a good result from someone, then treat them with goodness and kindness. Even if you're dealing with people who totally oppose you in something, if you come to them with fists and you come with them in, in, uh, with argumentation and you want to debate and argue with them with, uh, uh, in a very aggressive tone, then of course they're more than likely going to respond to you in an equal tone, if not worse than. But if you come to them in a manner <clears throat> consistent with the Sharia, with kindness and gentleness, more often than not, you'll see a more positive result. And when it comes to the new Muslim or Muslims interacting with their non-Muslim parents, they should be kind and gentle and respectful and with all of their elders. And they should strive their best to uh, show them guidance, if nothing else, by their actions and their deeds and hopefully by their tongue as well, by speaking to them about Islam and the beauty of Islam and the, uh, and, and, and the righteousness that Islam has to offer. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us of our sins and blesses us to be of those who practice what we preach and to be of those who are kind and gentle to our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good and forgive our evil and guide all of our parents to that which is right and correct to Islam and bless all of our parents and all of us with Jannah to Firdaus. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.